on y'all it's your girl nephew raps listen y'all we live and direct right now survive session power 214 radio listen y'all we love bringing y'all the dopest hottest independent artists not only from right here in the triple d but from all over okay and listen man i'm really excited because we got a dope guest on the show today with a story to tell i need y'all to tap in tune in help me welcome to the show maybach stang what's going on What's going on? What's happening, Queen? Good. Before I start to look, how you feeling? Already. Listen, glad to have you on today. So before we get into everything, tell us what city you from. What city you repping today? I'm from East Oakland, California. 94621. Okay. West Coast vibes. Shout out to the West Coast in the building. Niggas fall like lion chairs when it's murder beef. You ever see me take the stand? You better murder me. They offer ten, I say fuck. You never heard of C. They gave me fifty, I said thank you. Coming courtesy. These niggas hardly living. So for those listening in, uh, Maybach Stank is inside right now, but he's still doing the music thing. He's still doing his thing out here. So we're gonna start with the music side of things. Um, tell us a little bit about how you got started making music in the first place. I guess I got started off making music around eight years old. I used to uh, be in the studio all the time with my auntie in Atlanta. She used to be in there with the name of three keys sweat all the way from artists like Baby. Her name was Tracy Hardy. Um, uh, first, that was her marriage name. First name was Tracy Russian. Everybody in the industry knew her as uh, Tracy T. Love. So if you know about T. Love, you know she was a beast in that studio. So they just rubbed off on me. And, you know, she created a beast. Okay. So you had an honest. You grew up around music. Man, I love it. It's in my DNA. It, you know, it ain't on me. It's in me. Okay. All right. That's heavy. That's so, heavy influence right there. All right. So, so you know, you, you've been doing the music thing, but, of course, um, you know, a situation happened and there's been an unfortunate turn of events, right? Um, yeah. So I want to get into your story and, you know, what it is you want the people to know because you definitely have an interesting story. You definitely have a voice. And I want to, you know, allow this platform for you to talk a little bit about that. So tell us, you know, what's going on with you right now inside. Um, Thank you. Um. I'm wrongfully convicted. And, um, you can find my story at change.org, justice for Pierre Rushing. That's P I E R R E R U S H I N G. But uh, yeah, in 2011, um, I was wrongfully accused by a crackhead of uh, killing a, a dude over an iPod. If you ever see me on the streets, you know I don't listen to no iPods. I don't, I don't even ride mine. I'm not a backpacker. I don't walk around. There's no iPods. But Dude gave five different descriptions, all the way from 5'8", light skin, all the way to 6'2", 220 pounds. He changed the description five times, you know what I mean? It ended up pointing me out a six-pack. And it's so crazy that we live in the justice system where that's, they felt that's all they needed. They didn't need no DNA. They didn't need no gun. They didn't need no bullets. They didn't need no, no, no corroborating evidence or corroborating witnesses. They just took the word of a crackhead and, and, and took my life. So... I've been fighting um, for nine long years trying to get my life back. As of late, I've, I've been blessed by God, you know, the creator, to, to have a lot of influential and powerful people um, become aware of this story and get involved in doing the right thing. At this time, I'll, I'll choose not to say their names, but you can go listen to the Wonderful Conviction podcast on Spotify. Um, and you can also go follow the Wonderful Conviction page on Instagram. You will see my story, and you can read my story at change.org. So it's a lot of people that's that's, that's they're not feeling it. They've read about it. They can find the petition, and they they stand up and doing the uh, the right thing. Okay, all right. So you got a lot of people uh, rallying behind you and working with you, and I think that's a really important part of this story too. You know, you've been reaching out to folks to get your story out. Um, for sure, for sure. So, so that's really, really important. And shout out to those people. I know you said you wouldn't name them, but shout out to them for you know getting behind you because um, it is a very it's it's honestly been a sensitive time in this country for a long time. But what 2020 mm -hmm. has done is kind of it's crazy because I feel like going into 2020, everybody was talking about 
clear vision. Everybody was talking sure. about, you know, 2019 going to 2020. Everybody like, yeah, it's 2020. It's clear vision. It's about to be this and that. So I really feel like that's exactly what we manifested, low key, because For sure. you see everything now, and they can't hide certain things anymore. And there are in- injustices that everybody's talking about. It used to be taboo a little bit to talk about. Like celebrities yeah. wouldn't even want to talk about issues in the judicial system or the justice system. They wouldn't even speak yeah. on it until recent, right? You want to hear them talk yeah. about it. They'd be too afraid yeah. to lose sponsorship or deals or whatever. So, sure. you know, now just to see people talking about it, to see, you know, Ava DuVernay, she's putting out films, and then Meek Mill, and all these people are really putting in yeah. that extra work. I think that's so needed, especially for cases like yours, situations like yours. 